All right, everybody, welcome to our March 31st webinar. It is uh, very exciting for us to be doing another one with you. It's our second one this month, and we're really trying to pump these webinars out because we get such great response from uh, all of our participants and registrants, and we really appreciate you making the time. We know how busy you are, but uh, we hope that these are of great value for you and always provide you with a couple of nuggets or tidbits that you can take away and optimize uh, at your own radio stations and, and your businesses. Uh, we have a great, uh, a great webinar today, and I'm very excited. I had a great time sort of working on this one, um, as I always do. Uh, and uh, today, if you're uh, making sure you're in the right room, you are here for five innovative, way, innovative ways to engage and grow your audience. Uh, very excited about this one, so let's get right into it. And again, thanks for making the time to attend today. So as always, just a little bit of housekeeping. My name is Eric Eyes and I am your host today. I head up sales and marketing here at SoCast. And this is definitely one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite parts of the job. Uh, we want to encourage you to please feel free to ask questions as we go through the webinar. Uh, I have my trusty friend Shay on the uh, moderation. Uh, you can, I believe, on the right side of your screen, I think you can move it around, but on the right side of your screen, you should be able to ask questions. Uh, if you do have questions or feedback or thoughts, good, bad, or ugly, please don't hesitate to share them. We'd love to hear them from you. Again, as I always tell you, Shay will do her best to get to them in real time. But in the event we don't get back to you immediately, please give us 24 hours uh, in case it's something we have to research or get back to you on. But we will definitely address all questions uh, that do come in. So please send them our way. And again, feedback is encouraged as well. You can also tweet your thoughts about the webinar and please use the at SoCast handle uh, to tag us in there and hashtag digital dollars. We love seeing comments in our Twitter feeds uh, and we encourage you to also submit them there. And before we get started, as always, we want to give you a word from our sponsor, who is us truly here at SoCast. Our mission here is to help radio broadcasters and our ongoing mission is to make digital growth easy. When I speak of digital growth, I want to say we're really designed to help with our solutions on two sides of the coin. One is on the engagement side, that is helping you grow your listenership and digital audience through all of the different channels your audience is looking to engage with you. On the other side, we want to make sure that you turn digital channels into revenue centers so they aren't cost centers for you and we want to make sure that uh, you have all of the tools you need and solutions you need to really optimize digital revenue we like to do this with our integrated content management system and advertising platform for radio broadcasters and again we are built specifically to help radio broadcasters on the left side we have our audience platform and we make it easy whether you're a single station or multiple enterprise level broadcaster to really engage with your audience by creating, promoting, publishing, and sharing content across all of the digital channels that your audience is seeking you out in. On the other side, we really want to help your sales team grow revenue and offer multi-channel, omni-channel marketing campaigns that include your traditional spots and mentions, everything you've been selling for the last hundred years, as well as some of the owned and operated display and video inventory that you can provide them on your websites and mobile apps, as well as the more modern ad extension tools, things like programmatic, ad display, targeted display, geofencing, retargeting. And of course, we have a great team on board to help train your sales reps on how to sell digital, how to talk and pitch digital, as well as we provide all of the sales tools they need. So please reach out to us for more information on our entire integrated content management system and advertising platform. And I can't emphasize enough that we're here to help broadcasters of all shapes and sizes, different levels of digital sophistication. We work with, again, single station owner operators in micro markets, all the way up to large enterprise level broadcasters. And we have something to help all of you and the expertise to help 
all of the different permutations. So please do not hesitate to reach out to Shay, uh, ask her for to book a demo with myself, with her, uh, with one of our other account executives. We would love to help you out uh, and really help you transform and change your business to make sure it's truly viable for the future. Enough about us. Let's get into what we'll cover today in this in this uh, webinar. So I'm really excited to cover this off, as I've said a few times. And uh, today we're going to cover off five different ways to engage your audience. Uh, we're going to talk about digital conversations. We're going to talk about generating hyper local content. Talk about using push notifications and best practices around those. We're going to talk a little bit about contesting and promotion. And our fifth is SMS as an engagement tool. That SMS is texting for those of you who may not know. And these are the five different ways we are recommending that you drive engagement and audience growth. And we'll cover these off in some great detail today, providing you with examples, tangible things that you can take away back to your team. So stick with us. Let's get into it. So why does digital engagement matter? This is a question we talk about in a number of other webinars. And you know why is it so important to you? Well, there's really three reasons. First off, it's about talking to your biggest fans. Your biggest fans are the people who are gonna take the time to visit your websites, visit your mobile apps, engage with you on social media. So there is a reason for you in this day and age to be very active in all of those digital channels. The second one is we can help you drive traffic to all of your digital properties. That is to increase your listenership, increase the clicks to your streams, increase your website traffic, increase all of the engagement you have and the loyalty you get from, those, from your new audience or your P1s, those biggest fans we just talked about. And why ultimately do you do this? Do this? It's because the more traffic you have on your website, the more valuable your inventory is. So it's an opportunity for you to increase revenue. In order to engage your audience, it really comes down to having the right content in the right channels and amplifying that content using social media, SMS, and all of the tools we have today. There's a strong synergy between what radio broadcasters have done traditionally and becoming digital content producers that you are today as well. You really need to be thinking of yourself as omni-channel content producers. Now let's look at the five innovative ways to grow and engage your audience. And we'll start off with number one, leveraging your digital tools to generate one-to-one -to -one conversations. So what do we mean by this? Well, let me just start off by saying this is not new. Radio has been doing this for a long time. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because I know who's on this webinar. And when it comes down to it, really historically and traditionally, the phone line, that old device on the left has been the way you've maintained those one-to-one -one conversations with your audience by encouraging them to call in and engage with the on-air talent or just to engage in general, to share their opinions, to enter a contest, whatever it may be, the phone line has really always been that vehicle to generate those one-to-one -one conversations and engagement with the people who are taking the time to engage with you. But there are a variety of new ways that you can engage with your audience through digital tools and digital channels. And you really have a variety of tools such as activity stream conversations, in-app, in your mobile app chat, not SMS, but in-app chat. You can encourage blog commenting and engage with that. And of course, social media really has become an alternate means of communicating with your most loyal fans. Let's talk about activity stream conversations. When I'm talking about activity stream, what I mean is places on your website where you are aggregating social media content or member conversations or audience conversations. Having a place on your website where you can do that is very, very critical. On all of SoCast website, for those, I know we have a mix of people who aren't using SoCast on this webinar, as well as some of our partners, active partners today. One of the tools that we have available that we highly recommend is the ability for your audience to 
engage with you by sending in messages, either through the website, and in a moment we'll also show you how that's done through the app, but having people send in conversations and messages that can be aggregated and displayed on the website. On the platform, you can either force people to sign in, so it helps you grow your membership database, or you can leave it so they can just come on anonymously. But also having a tool that allows for you to solicit your audience for conversation and allow your on-air talent to bridge with online programming by saying, hey, go to our website and tell me what you wanna hear over the next lunch hour, or tell me what you think of the new political policy that just happened and share it and we'll push it out on our webpage. It also is important that you're moderating these conversations manually if possible, because that way it's personalized and it's one-to-one, -one. but you also have the ability, if you're using SOCAST, for example, to automate those so you don't have to have somebody sitting there going through every conversation. And that automation happens by scrubbing against a blacklist or a series of words that you put in that may negate any negativity or derogatory comments from being posted on your website or app. In this case, one of the greatest benefits of this is it also can help you grow your audience database. If you do force people to sign in to your member club or your loyalty club or your elite listener club, et cetera, then you can really, um, really grow that by soliciting these type of conversations. And you can have them again on the SOCAS platform, you know, ideally, you know, on your own websites as well, if you're not using the SoCast platform, you want to have those conversations displayed because people love to see their name and having the on-air talent or a community manager within your team moderate these conversations and interact with them, much like answering the phones. This is a great way to grow audience engagement and to grow your website traffic. You can also use in-app chat to build community. And by in-app chat on our apps, you have the ability like I did here to submit a comment, uh, even with a photo or a 30 second recording of my voice. And this is a great way again to bridge on air programming with online by soliciting, hey, go on air, you know, tell me, you know, give us 30 seconds of what you think of, you know, the local sports team going to the final four, whatever it may be that you have. Um, you want to be able to solicit that. Send me a picture of you at work. Send me a picture of your ugly lunch that your wife made you. Send me, you know, a picture of your your dog or cat while you're at work from home. Whatever it may be, you can have people uh, submit conversation and have that conversation equally moderated um, on an app. And that is a great way. If you don't have two-way conversation where a community manager or on-air talent can engage with the audience, you know, you're really uh, giving up an opportunity here. And it's great when you have that omni-channel experience these two can be used to grow your audience database and it will also if promoted on air as i constantly say omni-channel promotion meaning on air promotion to promote your digital channels it will drive app downloads as well so you can further turn those, that app into revenue as well with sponsorship this is a great example uh, we did have a uh, a partner of ours a, a while back do a contest uh, where they solicited people to send in a 30 second recording of them howling to win tickets to a metallica concert god willing we'll be able to get back to having live concerts i'm missing it live music more than almost anything it's uh, been a long time but uh, just as an example you know it doesn't have to be to win tickets it can be just be an opinion this is a great example and it did increase their downloads of their app by uh, by 100 percent by two times so uh, that is definitely an off opportunity and again it allows you to bridge on air with online programming and what i be mean by that is the talent solicited this on air and had people go on their mobile app to, to conduct this activity, this call to action. So a great example of, of how this would use. You can also have, ha, should have the ability, depending on your content management system, certainly with the SoCast platform, you can have blog comments and encourage blog comments. This will allow the community to place 
and share their opinions and comments on your blogs or news stories. It's obviously excellent, not just for news and talk stories, but because that's the bulk of your content on news and talk format sites, that will be great. But it can be very uh, appropriate for music-based sites as well. Again, moderate these comments where possible. If people are complaining or providing kudos, say thank you, share it. If they're upset about something or you know programming, reach out to them and explain to them. Again, create that one-to-one -one interaction to build that brand loyalty. Also, you can force people to have to be signed into the membership database or audio, uh, your loyalty club or VIP club, whatever you may call it, your inside listener club. Uh, to leave comments and if you have a good content management system you'll be able to moderate these with ease and be able to react to them and reply to them with ease to say those thank yous or apologize or share an opinion as to why one thing is is uh, the way you've done it but you are local you, you are local first as radio broadcasters and encouraging comments on your content will help have people coming back to it and of course, social media is so vital in this day and age to promote, share, and engage with your audience. In previous webinars, some of you who may have attended them will recall uh, something I presented called the third rule, thirds rule. And this is a really good rule for you on how to break down your social media content that you push out. And we recommend that a third should be promoting your um all your uh, your content and shows on your website a third of it should be sharing entertaining posts that are relevant to your formats you can do that by curating content or or monitoring uh artists content or local influencers content and sharing that and commenting on that and the other third of your time on social media should be shared should be spent sorry uh, engaging with comments and posts that others leave, particularly your audience on your social media profiles, that is an incredible way to keep them coming back. People love to be engaged with and speaking speak to you. And again, these are your biggest listeners. You also want to make sure that you're using social media to promote the content on your websites and apps and always include a link back to your to the website, to the URL, to a specific URL if you're promoting a blog or a news story or a local uh, event page that just launched. Make sure you're sharing that URL and link back to your website, not other people's website. You should own your content and it should be used to drive back to your websites, not other people's. And even if it's not, then provide the link for your stream, if nothing else. If it's just a generic comment, say, by the way, check us out here and provide the link to your streaming player. And a great way to manage social and to make it easy for yourself and to streamline it is to use an SRM or a social relationship management tool. Social relationship management tool offer many benefits. We have one built into the back end of our platform just as a standard uh, feature within our content management system. And it will allow you to easily publish and monitor social media. You can see the image that I have on this slide right here. You can manage and monitor your Facebook timeline, your Instagram timeline, your Twitter feeds, whether it's a hashtag or your own Twitter feed. You can even monitor RSS feeds so you can get breaking news. Your talent can have this open on a side screen just to see what's happening in the local community. Many of our partners use this to find content as almost content on air prep as well. And it will also allow you and minimize the amount of time you have to spend what's called natively in social media. So not you will now no longer have to have five social media tabs open uh, with you know five different logins. You can now manage everything from one dashboard to engage with your P1s. And you can find influencers there and as we said on the previous slide, take a third of your time to engage with those people so you can capture the benefit of their influence with their audience as well. And it also, our social relationship management tool allows you to monitor all inbound conversations in the inbox. And this includes the member conversations we talked about in this section earlier, as well as social, rela social media commenting as well. So you can do it very streamlined. 
And a good SRM will also provide you with a content calendar, which will allow you to monitor the volume of content you have going out, who's producing content, where do you have gaps in your day, and it will allow you to schedule posts within those gaps or edit other people's posts as well. But it gives you a good collaboration tool so you can see where you have a critical mass of social media content going out who is producing it, and into what social media profiles it is going out. Let's get into number two. Our number two is get hyper-local, and we've talked a lot about this over the last year in our webinars, and you know we, we know that radio broadcasters are hy hyper-focused on becoming hyper-local. So we know that local content is king, and omni-channel content strategies are key to growing listenership and engagement. So getting hyper-local, on the SOCAS platform, the best performing sites are those the ones that are actively helping listeners stay informed with all of the variety, the list you see before you. Of course, local news, closures, obituaries, classifieds, business directories, events, and weather. And I can also tell you for those, and you know, me and my team, we're out there selling our platform every day, and I can't tell you when we first get in touch with somebody for the first time, they say, well, we're just small market. We, you know, our audience doesn't go to websites and mobile apps and things like that. I want to tell you all that of our top 50 most trafficked websites on the SoCast platform, 70 plus percent of them are in towns of 15,000 or less because you have the ability to be that local content hub for your community. And there isn't as much competition. So if you're doing it right by providing the right type of hyper-local content, you can generate significant volume of page views and engagement on your website, which you can then capitalize on and turn into revenue. As we've discussed, the more eyeballs you have on your site, the more revenue opportunity you have. And you need to ask yourself, does your content management system allow you to produce and distribute hyper-local content with ease? And are you act, does it enable you to solicit audience and, audience and local content submissions as well? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in this section. So let's look at classifieds. Um, the local listings tool, as an example, on the SOCAS platform uh, in our content management system, allows for your audience to submit classifieds into a buy and sell section of your website. And it enables you to have different sponsorable categories. Uh, and the, these pages generally are great traffic drivers. I can attest that our friends at CKDR do a phenomenal job in a very small market. Uh, less than 15,000 people, and they are generating significant page views each month and able to monetize their sites very effectively. And classifieds uh, are an excellent way for uh, an excellent traffic driver for them. And they promote it omni channel on it as well. They promote it in social media, they promote it on air, and this helps drive that traffic. But having the ability to then go out and sell targeted advertising for different sections of the uh, of the classifieds to go out and target a real estate agent for or sorry a, a contractor for your real estate section, a body shop, a local body shop for your automotive section, etc., really allows your sales team to go out and sell as well. So classifieds are a great way to become hyper local provide your audience with a unique reason to come to your website. It allows you to have some cross channel promotion as well. And of course, the benefit of the there's the benefit of the revenue opportunity and the increased traffic that classifieds will at, offer. Another local listing functionality that is integral, particularly in small markets, is obituaries. Providing obituaries is a great public service announcement for your local community, especially with the demise of the local newspapers in the smaller communities as well. They do offer for targeted sponsorship by allowing your sales team to go out and offer positions for florists, estate planners, funeral homes, hospices, etc. 
So it is a revenue generator. And in small markets, I can tell you that these pages drive significant traffic for our partners. You can partner with a local funeral home to automatically upload the obituaries on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, these tend to be significant traffic pages for our partners who are, who are leveraging uh, this type of content, as well as more importantly, providing your local community with a great and respectable public service. Local closures for schools, churches, businesses as well are a great opportunity to, and a unique opportunity for you to provide on your website to help differentiate yourself Remember, you are an essential service, and it's these reasons that make you an essential service in this really trying time. So being able to offer those that information on closures uh, and promoting it again across multiple channels by having your, your on-air talent, either reading some off or driving people to your websites and apps to find out where the local school closures are, for example, and the reasons or business closures or church closures, whatever it may be, is a great public service that you're, you're offering as well. And another incredible way to drive traffic to your website and promote it across different channels. And of course, business directories are another one. I really want to give a shout out. I don't know if there's anybody on uh, from our partners here at Giant. Uh, FM, but they've done an amazing job building a local business directory for Shop Local, Shop Niagara, and really trying to connect people in communities to enhance their local community. Uh, they've done a great job using our platform with our hover tool and, and really driving this really nice. Um, and you can make it either a free or paid type service. Uh, you can have different sponsorable categories. You can tie it in re with reviews or and of course you can combine on air and digital ad buys. So you can, you know, if you are gonna charge for these and you're not offering it as a bit of a, a freebie uh, right now, you can, you know, add this as an add on or an upsell to your traditional sales as well. It's always nice to feature one business, maybe at the top in your feature rotators or things like that. And promoting shop local, particularly in this age of box stores and, you know, big, big retailers, you know, promote your local. Uh, there's big, you know, that, that's a, that is a great public service for your local advertisers. And uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously something radio should be focused on from a more selfish revenue perspective. It's also going to help you retain or grow a lot of new clients by showing goodwill to the community. And you can do this either using uh, you know, a local listings tool like SoCast Offer, or if your website or your content management doesn't have something like that, you can just build a custom form and intake the submissions with images and things like that uh, via a form builder or something like that, like a WordPress system would offer. Some other things to consider consider uh, while you're doing hyperlocal content uh, is to leverage your local audience for news and traffic submissions. So that's becoming more and more common, especially as purse strings are a little bit tighter in this day and age following the pandemic and during the pandemic, where you know you may not have as many resources to per, to write blogs and news stories or get traffic information. Rely on your community to provide those using a custom form to intake that information or to use your mobile app member commenting or your member commenting during rush hour, have an activity stream that's dedicated to that. Those type of things will go a long way. You want to ensure you leverage your on-air programming. I've said that I think on every slide, but I cannot emphasize that enough that you need to bridge your on-air programming with your online programming to make sure that you're sharing your content in an omni-channel format. And that includes also promoting it out in social media frequently with direct links back to your web pages. And lastly, again, some of these tools or some of these sections on your website will enable your sales team to target specific relevant advertisers for various sections and categories as we discussed uh, a few slides ago. So those are some thoughts on hyper-local um, hyper content and how to manage it, some best practices. Hopefully there's a couple of nuggets in there for you all to take away. We're gonna move on to our third idea to grow and engage your audience. 
And the third one is push notifications. Now, push notifications are often thought of as just a mobile app, and they predominantly are. But there are systems that allow for browser notifications that are essentially push notifications on your desktop. So you can have uh, the ability to send out push notifications while people are on their desktop or laptops or, or tablets as well as the mobile uh, experience as well. Relevant notifications will definitely increase traffic to your websites and mobile apps. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this section, but it's definitely important to provide relevant, non-spammy notifications. And with push notifications, again, the benefits are that you can drive traffic to a specific page on one of your digital properties, your websites or apps of your choosing. You can promote contests, con uh, co some of your content, such as breaking news or blogs, weather alerts, sports updates, events, your latest podcast download, and you can get them right into the, your P1s or subscribers' hands. Particularly on the mobile app side, your P1s are the ones who are really taking the time to download your app. If they've taken, if they're big fans, they've likely downloaded that mobile app. This is a way to ping them, so to speak, or tap them on the shoulder virtually by saying, hey, we have something for you. Click here to view. So you can engage your audience with the content that they want that's relevant to them anytime they're on their desktop and computer. So some best practices to consider. I pulled out seven of them when you're using, uh, when you're building out your push notifications. Users obviously have to be asked at the point of opt-in when they download your app or when they go to your website for the very first time. They need to say, well, are you willing to, as you can see, for example, I have our good friends GX94, uh, just as you know, an, an example that it asks, would you like them to send you push notifications? And then you can go in, they can always opt out of push notifications or select which categories of push notifications by going into their settings panel. So you can see our friends at CKRM have a huge variety of different, uh, different uh, push notification groups, if you will, that will allow that, that I can opt in or out of to make sure I'm getting content that is relevant for me. Um, so that is really important. And three very critical things that are important as best practices and consideration when doing push notifications are they should be timely, they should be personable, personal, and they should be actionable. Meaning if there's a major trade or the end of a game or significant news event or a weather, a weather alert because you're in a more weather volatile area, you want those to go out. By allowing people, by, by sending out different push notification categories, you can personalize those more effectively to ensure that your audience is not getting inundated with just all your notifications, but rather are getting relevant notifications. And you want to make sure they are clear and actionable as to what the user should do next. When you're putting out your and writing the actual copy for your push notifications, try to have your calls to action in the first 30 characters because that's what people will see on their mobile phone when they look at the push notification and their phone buzzes. When they look at it, it's only going to be the thir first 30 characters. So that's where you want your CTAs to be. And you want to attempt to peak interest to optimize clicks. And I'll give you some examples of how you can do that on the next slide. And push notifications, we don't encourage people to monetize push notifications. Um, so they shouldn't be sold to a third party. I'm not saying we don't have people doing it and there aren't people out there doing it, but you should either limit it or forego it entirely. In fact, Apple, if they do find out that you are doing it, will very possibly penalize you and pull you from the App Store. They don't like it to be used for that type of content at all. Um, you know, there are obviously a few workarounds on that just to make it, you know, this push notify at the bottom, this push notification is brought to you by Eric Ford. But again, we don't encourage that. Um, again, because it's risky and Apple may pull you out of the store, which is a big hassle and something you don't want to deal with. So optimizing your notifications, you know, when you're measuring a good open rate of a push notification is about 
Um, you know, it's not many, but if you have a critical mass of app users and downloads, you know, it can be a, a large amount of viewership that will increase the volume of traffic that's referred to your website or to the content on your app. You can start always, as we talked about, having that CTA with language that piques interest and is, is actionable. And I provide you with a list of just a few, but starting with action words, starting with things that are going to engage with me and tease me are going to get people to click through. You know, just announced or breaking news. Guess which, you know, guess who's coming to the studio this afternoon? Those type of things people, questions will want to engage with. And of course, always include a clickable URL with your push notifications. Uh, you can see I sent myself a push notification on our, our Radio 88 app. Uh, the nice thing about push notifications is it will show up in the in the message in the notification tray. It will also show up on the badge or icon, as you can see, as there is an outstanding push notification. And of course, when I go into my notification tray, I see, you know, check out this awesome webinar, Eric is awesome, click now. So I have a call to action in there. I probably should have started the click now or starting now, but you get the idea right there. So that is our uh, best practices and thoughts on the value of push notifications. Again, you can do desktop push notifications as well, uh, which are great ways to engage people while they're sitting at their laptop. Uh, you may need an additional subscription for something like OneSignal to do those. Uh, our platform does enable you to do them with a integration with OneSignal, but uh, it is a great way. And either if you're using SoCast, you can either talk to our client success team about how to get those going. And if you're not using SoCast, you know, there are ways definitely consult your content management provider or system to figure out how you can do desktop push notifications as well, because it's a great way to drive traffic to your website. And we all understand the benefits now of driving traffic. Number four, contest and promotions. Well, this one is something you as radio broadcasters have been doing since year one. We know that and it's great. Um, and we want to encourage this as really a lucrative and critical channel to engage your audience and to drive revenue through sponsorships. And there are a wide variety of contests you can be running. Everything from a general sweepstakes and giveaway to, con to contest and promotions that solicit user generated content and we're going to provide you with a wide variety of examples in this section of our web uh, of our webinar so the benefits are that again you can just do traditional giveaways or ugc user generated content contests and contests can generally be themed around advertiser requirements which is great because your sales team can go out and sell sponsorship for these Another thing, if your content management system allows or your contesting tool allows and should allow, is it is a huge benefit to include marketing opt-ins for your advertiser. So when people go online to enter a contest, do you have the ability to put in a question that says, would you like to receive notifications about promotions and special offers from sponsor A, B, C? And that way you can share those marketing, that marketing information as lead generation for those advertisers. You want to promote, um, you want to promote through web, social, and terrestrial when you're selling these. You want to offer it as an omni-channel sponsorship when you're going out and looking for sponsors for these. And you also want to have tools that allow you to select listener uh, winners in various ways, whether it's through uh, just a draw by internally that your own team is doing, your promotions team is doing, or whether it's having audience vote off or a combination, a hybrid of, you know, having you select the top 10 cutest babies in the area and then having, you know, the audience vote on the finalists, that type of thing. And of course, we recommend and believe very strongly in theming your, your contest around seasonal events, holidays, et cetera, and having a bit of a recurrence. So some best practices for promotional promotions, keep them simple. The more complex they are, the more people are not gonna wanna enter them. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty common sense. Think omni-channel. You guys have done an amazing job 
with on air and driving people to the phone lines and driving people to, to answer. Think about more omni-channel solutions. Think about how you can get them driving not just to the phone line, but to the website as well, to the mobile app. So you can leverage the traffic from those to sell sponsorships and to keep your audience engaged because they aren't looking at you any longer as just a single me a single channel medium. You need to be an omni-channel medium. Try to find and develop promotions that you can that are recurring, tentpole campaigns that can recur once every year, twice every year at various stages. Obviously, you can iterate on them and improve them, but the more recurring, the more success you have, the more you're able to identify and reproduce the success of a previous promotion, the better. And always tie it into your loyalty club. So if you have a membership database, a VIP club, an insiders club, definitely having people sign up when they register for that is a great way so you can do email marketing so you can engage with them and offer them gated special content but it is a great way to aggregate first party data so you can also go out and retarget them for your advertisers later on so you can provide your advertisers with lead generation and opt-ins as well some ideas now i'm going to give you a few of them uh that song so the idea uh, was that uh, all song listings were re removed from the station websites and to enter users submitted the song names through the website that they heard every, you know, at, at the top of the hour or at whatever, at nine, one and five, whatever it may have been. And they had to enter the names of the songs. That way they went to the website to enter this and using the entry form, they were you were able to collect a uh, marketing data. They got about 6,000 contents, uh, more than 6,000 contest entries, and it increased web traffic by over 10% due to this contest. So very simple. They just sort of took out the, and they promoted it again on web, on air, on web, and in social media to deliver an omni-channel experience. Another uh, type of contest you can run are photo contests. Photo contests always generate a lot of activity. People love to submit photos. Um, in these cases, each of these contests ran for about four weeks. Uh, and you can do things like backyard or home makeovers. Uh, so you have a website presence. You can have some social media presence. Uh, you can have galleries on your website that encourage people to go in and vote on which ones they like best. Uh, and uh, this was a really great contest that we often uh, push people out to um, because it generated great, great results. It generated a significant volume of client opt-ins uh, for the various uh, sponsors of this contest. And again, these are leads that they were able to provide the content, uh, provide the different sponsors uh, that you can see. And they generated great revenue as well. Uh, about ten thousand dollars in cash and five thousand dollars in prizes uh, for a home makeover and one that they do is the backyard makeover where they did twelve and a half thousand and four thousand in prizes as well which helped offset and increase the volume of entries with great prizes another just example just visually of a seasonal promotion is you know around uh, ski season and again I know we're getting into spring and summer now so it's a little uh, uh, off but but you get the idea of just having the ability to enter contests um, using photos and having people submit, et cetera, is a great way to engage your audience. One contest which I've loved for a long time, which generated great results, which was a video promotion, was the River's Voice. Uh, and this was just a take on um, of, you know, a very much a video a talent show if you will they had a tremendous response from this this was a smaller community uh where they had uh, people uh submit their themselves singing performing and then they narrowed it down and had those people come in over a number of weeks into the studio where they had live video of them performing in the studio and then it all ended with a big event at the local Trevor Treasure Cove Casino where these people performed uh, and what you know they ended up giving away some great prizing um and uh you know somebody won a you know somebody won an opportunity for like a record sort of a little bit of a recording at a recording studio etc and it drove significant social 
volume, uh, social media activity, uh, a big increase in their in their social media engagement. Uh, they saw almost a thousand percent membership a database increase and almost 400% website traffic over the time period that this rant ran. Uh, they were getting over 25,000 page views a month on just this one on the one page. They had about 2,200 new signups to their uh, membership database and they got uh, all in about 7,000 votes. Uh, for the contestants on this. So great small market example and they did a great job with this. A great, again, a great sponsored contest. Other ideas, you know, you can have people submit stories, uh, whether it's around Valentine's Day. In this day and age, you know, local heroes is a great idea for local healthcare workers or things of that nature. And, you know, maybe the local hero in a community hero, have people submit teachers of the year near the end of the school year uh, are great ideas and submitting stories as to why certain people are being nominated for those. You can do a lot with story submission promotion ideas as well. So that's some good examples of some promotions and I hope that helps. The last tool we wanna to recommend today, and believe me, we could go on probably for a few days on this topic, but another great tool to engage and grow your audience is texting, SMS, as an engagement tool. And we really think that there are some great benefits to having a texting tool or an SMS or multimedia uh, messaging solution as well, because it really allows for a two-way conversation um, or communication between on-air talent and st the station, really, and listeners. It provides instant engagement, and again, it's measurable, which is always great because you can have your on-air talent mention something, text to, do this, send this, and you can see what sort of levels of engagement you're getting immediately instantaneously. Uh, texting has a very high response and open rate, certainly much higher than email, higher than push notifications, so it's a great way to engage your audience. Obviously, everybody is on their smartphones today incessantly, so a very great way to leverage your smartphone usage. And it's got great new revenue stream, non-traditional revenue, NTR revenue as well, to help augment what you're getting traditionally as well. So texting can be a, a a really valuable tool and it really it, it really helps you in three ways and I've broken them down to start with programming to help you build the relationships and you can do some things and encourage communication and engagement between talent and listeners with texting by soliciting song requests or polls and opinions what do you think of this tell us what you heard tell us what you think of the new vaccine rollout plan submit interview questions live while people are on the air with you doing interviews it's a great tool to use that news tips and traffic tips games that may not be so contesting oriented but just engagement oriented such as you know asking a, a you know generic trivia question or an i spy send me whoever sees this out in the community today those kind of things and also great for picture sharing for events, you know, whether it's weather at concerts, remotes, events, etc., a great way. You can also utilize with a good texting service keywords and what keywords are are automated messages triggered by corresponding keywords. So you can almost have a bounce back. So if you're on air and you say send me uh the word um all request, you know, and uh all request and you'll get a bounce back with immediately it will give you like a coupon or a download or uh, information about how to submit a, a link to submit um, a song request or anything like that. You can have people request uh, links, you can have links uh, bounce back, You can so they know where to link to, uh, so it can drive traffic to your website or to enter a contest as well. So really is a great tool SMS to build that type of one-to-one -one engagement again. And again, we talked about the revenue opportunity as well, because we want to make sure that this is a revenue center and not a cost center for you. So texting programs can definitely generate new digital non-traditional revenue with text line sponsorship, keyword and bounce back with coupons, um, sponsored contests, and even custom signatures. A good texting solution will allow you when you have that bounce back response, you know, I love your station. Thanks for listening. 
powered by you know Joe's Ford trucks. So great, you can get those type of things. And it again, it'll allow you to bridge on-air programming with online programming uh, as well, or digital positions on your websites and apps. You can have you know phone uh, text phone line sponsored by etc. Pizza Hut, all great ways to generate some additional revenue. And it can also act as an additional contesting tool above and beyond everything we just talked about in the in the promotions and contesting section. You can offer a contesting tool that really differentiates yourself, a new way for your audience to engage with you and and send in submissions like selfies or again, we talked about the I spy. So they, you know, maybe request uh, everybody take a picture of the local landmark that you're you're down at if there's an event around it. Keywords, again, having that triggered response, people send it in, and then you can just pick random winners. Everybody who sends in uh, you know, a special keyword will be entered to win, a, entered into a contest. And you can also have people you know, register to enter a contest by taking pictures at your live remotes if those come back, or at concerts or sporting events when those start to come back in the summer and, and fall, et cetera. So great ways to generate some additional engagement and to generate contests because a good texting tools, SMS tool will allow you to see everybody who sent you those keywords in and then you can just randomly pick a winner, reach out to them, pull them in, make announcements on the air, maybe even put their face on your website, on your mobile apps, et cetera, to give them the notoriety that they're so seeking and to have them become loyal listeners. Well, that really covers everything today. I love doing this webinar. I hope you guys all got some good information. And if you didn't, reach out to me. Let me know because we're always looking to provide valuable insights to you where that, that you can take away back to your stations. And we would love to uh, you know, hear your feedback so we can continually improve these webinars and deliver content that works for you, that helps you drive business and transform your businesses. Uh, that's really my goal every day. And uh, hopefully we've accomplished some of that today. But please reach out to me and let me know if we have or haven't. Um, you can always reach out to me. My name is Eric, E-R-I-C, at SoCastDigital.com to free consultation, a demo of our platform, just to talk anything. I love to chat with all of you. Uh, book a demo with us for sure. We're not a, a boiler room. We're not going to give you the hard sell. We just want to show you what we have. Uh, and I also have a great content cheat sheet, uh, which we are very happy to send out. Please email me. I'll be happy to send you that out. Lastly, as we always do, we have a special offer for all of our attendees today. If you're not a SoCast partner yet, if you sign up before May 31st, you will get 50% off your first year of licensing on your web and app licenses. That's a great deal. I have five of those to give out. So the first five people to sign up uh, between now and May 31st will be uh, entitled to that. So reach out to us today and get your demo and the sales process started. We'd be thrilled to talk to you. Again, I want to thank everybody for their time. We would love to help you increase your digital engagement and revenue. That's what we do. So don't hesitate to reach out to Eric at SoCastDigital.com or Shay at SoCastDigital.com. We'll be, we're there for you, my friends. We'll see you again with our next webinar in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for attending today and for everybody's time. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and look forward to your questions. Have yourselves great days and a very happy holiday weekend coming up. All the best.